Look at that. What is up guys, Flossy Missiles here. In today's video, I'm gonna be cutting out this whole rusted section along my uh, lower windshield and replace it with the brand new one. So this one I picked up from J-Bugs. It was $165-ish, something like that. And it's a replacement panel. I'm sure it's not gonna line up perfectly, but we're gonna get as close as possible. I think what I'm gonna end up doing is uh, taking the doors off of it and uh, cutting all the way back, all the way up into here on both sides. And uh, I'm trying not to get into this pan right here because that'd really mess up the look of this thing. And it's not rusted down there, so we're fine right there. And then same thing on this side. I don't know how far I'm gonna go up and how bad it actually is. But so, <clears throat> so the things we're gonna have to do is take the windshield out of it, take the doors off of it, um, obviously the windshield wipers. This one's, this one's broken. As you see, someone pulled it off or snapped it off for some reason, I don't know why. And this is a one year only part, which kind of sucks. So yeah, let's get to it. Hopefully I can pop that down as well. Also got a Volkswagen emblem. Look how, look how big and beautiful that thing is. It's almost too shiny for this bus though. So. Show me this old Volkswagen bus door. It's actually pretty simple. There's a C-clip right here. Pop that off and push the pin through. And then there's uh, four bolts. They're all six millimeter Allen head bolts. Try to get the C-clip off. Okay, there's the C-clip right there. Put that to the side, don't lose it. Okay, and there's that pin. Now I can go ahead and remove the four Allen keys. I recommend having someone hold the bottom of the door or hold the end of the door just so it doesn't fall off. And there's both doors off. Actually, the slider's off right now. Doing some rebuilding on the little mechanism right here. These pieces are actually getting pretty hard to find, so if you have one in good shape, keep it in good shape, keep it nice and looped up and all that stuff. But yeah, let's pop out this windshield. Um, if you guys ever popped out a windshield on a bus, it's really easy or a bug or anything like that. We're gonna get a, a knife or a you know, uh, razor blade. We're gonna cut along this edge right here, this rubber, and we just push out the windshield, the whole thing will come out. Just be super careful with it. If it's uh, still in good shape like this one, doesn't have any cracks or any dings, so uh, no chips. So we're gonna try to be extra careful with this one and get her pulled out. Okay, after running a knife all the way around it, I removed a bunch of the, the molding on the outside as well. I'm gonna go ahead and start trying to pop this thing out. As you can see, the windshield is out, and I'm not gonna lie, that was a pain. This clip is actually 14 minutes long. Of course, I'm gonna speed it up. But look at a bunch of the fiberglass uh, that was put there as like a temporary fix by someone in the past. Has all came off, and you can see all the giant nasty holes. But this will all be brand new here shortly. I also took off the wiper blades without showing you guys. Um, it's just a six millimeter. That one's like a nine millimeter. Gotta take off this little squirter. And we're getting close to start cutting and cutting. But look at that rust, I'm sure. Look at that. It's so bad. It's like when you do this kind of, these kind of fixes, it honestly just makes it worse because it keeps the moisture underneath of it. And yeah, it doesn't look so hot. Vacuum that channel out a little bit more and I remove these two nuts that were holding on uh, the windshield wipers in place or the windshield wiper little pieces anyways. If you notice, there's a squirter right here, and there's supposed to be one right here. I was wondering what I was missing. I thought there was fiberglass over it, but they, they actually put a metal patch. You can kind of see a square right there. They put over it, so that's pretty funny. And there's a metal patch over here as well, right there. You guys can kind of see the outline of it. So it's been repaired before, and I think the windshield must have leaked because they put all this silicone going up to the sides and stuff, and that collected a lot of water in it, and it caused like a little bit of rust. I mean, it's not like through or anything, but it's pretty annoying that they had like silicone because they probably thought that was the reason it was leaking. Should have just bought a new seal, I don't know. I don't know what the situation was. But either way, we'll get it figured out. The first couple cuts have been made. So the line going, let me zoom this out a little bit for you guys. The line going from here all the way across on the bottom has been cut. I cut right here as well on both sides. 
And now I'm getting ready to get the grinder and then grind all along here. I might gr get out the pencil grinder, whatever it's called, the the fingertip grinder. I don't know. This guy right here. <laughs> Cannot <laughs> So anyways, I might bust that out, but I think it might, I might, might be easier just to use a, a normal grinder with a grinder wheel on it and grind all along here to get any spot welds off of it, and then this whole thing will pop right off, and we can start trimming up this one to go on it. whole thing's really loose now. I can't really find the spot welds. It's just due to the rust. It's like hard to tell what's a spot weld, but I need to grab a screwdriver or some kind of prying object and pry this little flap over this way. And I should be able to pull this off. I may have to make one little cut going right here and one on this side, but yeah, I gotta pry them up on both sides and we'll try to get this thing pulled off. Instead of trying to pry that corner up, I even have a little tool to do it. That'll probably work good right there. I'm actually gonna grind this edge down because there's like, you know, more solid metal underneath and that should just lift off and then I can go ahead and pop off the bottom part of the metal. So yeah, I'm gonna grind it. You start seeing a little crack up here, a little split in the metal up here. So that's when you know to stop, because you've gotten down to where they'll both start to separate. Let's see if I can grab something to shove in between there. Okay, check that out. See what I mean? It's like ready. Oh, focus, come on, focus, baby. It's ready to separate right there. So we're gonna go ahead and pop off the rest of this panel. There's the old one compared to the new one. I still have to finish on getting the rest. There. Some of it didn't come out all the way. So some of it's still attached to this back piece of metal. So I'm gonna go in and try to get all the spot welds out. But these spot welds are so hard to find. I'm just gonna end up grinding this whole old piece just off completely. I have marked out where I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna trim an inch off the bottom of it. And uh, hopefully it fits right up in this channel. It's looking like it will. I know this isn't the exact dimension as the original one, but hopefully we get pretty close. I'm also gonna have to do some notching up here, but we'll get to that later. Right now I'm gonna try to take an inch off of this. First test fit on with the bottom being trimmed. It lines up really good. And it's pretty good on top as well. As you can see, I'm doing a butt joint. So yeah, I just gotta get a little bit better. I'm gonna run the grinder across the bottom of, bo of both this and this and trim up this edge. So the camera battery died about two hours ago. Uh, I've been out here well, and of course in this heat, it's been 103 today. As you can see, I'm throwing some tacks on it, then completing them and kind of hopping around from area to area, not to get too much heat, no warpage, but it's going good for the most part. The fitment on this panel is not ideal it's not great it's definitely a, a kind of a crappy stamp um i know a good one to use is classic fab but i would have had to wait for that one and also it's like 100 100 bucks more i'm not sure something like that but for the price of this one and i could pick it up the same day i'm not complaining it's coming out all right as you can see i grinded it down just a hair right there just to see what it looked like and this thing is going to turn out dialed it's going to be smooth so pretty stoked to me it's kind of time consuming Get everything to sit, which is perfect, but it's looking good. I also forgot to mention I was gonna give some tips about using tech screws or self tappers. These work great to hold uh, it into place, and then if you want to take it off, put it back on a bunch of times, you'll know exactly where it goes back into place. And if it fits up good, that's good. I also marked center on it when I was doing some measuring and getting everything super duper straight. Also, um, weld through primer on the back side of these, and all the rust was cleaned off of the back side, so that should all be good. To Okay, now I'm on one of the more miserable parts of this whole thing is grinding this weld bead down. As you can see, you can grind it and actually get it pretty smooth. Keep going a little more, you get it perfect like this. I'm using a 120 grit flap disc. Keep in mind that it takes off a lot of metal, so you gotta be careful not to get, get it too wavy. I'm gonna go over it with um, uh, DA in a little bit. Try to flatten it out a little bit. It's kind of hard because it's round. But um, get it as best as I can. I got this corner looking pretty good the way it sits and lines up and all that stuff. So yeah, uh, light glaze coat over it. It should be fine.
threw some 60 grit on the DA and made a couple passes as you can see looks pretty smooth I'm just gonna go ahead and hit that with some acetone and get it all nice and clean and then we'll wipe some uh, Bondo on there just with some smart brand uh, lightweight body filler just the house brand for my local shop I went ahead and applied nice little layer and sanded it and it's super smooth right now it's not perfect by no means there's still some highs and lows but i'm not super concerned about it. it's not really a show bus i'm gonna keep in the original paint and all that stuff so not too worried if it's not perfect but uh that's pretty much the finished look of it and i'm pretty stoked gotta spray some self-etching primer on it and get to sanding okay i got it i believe in 150 grit uh, i'm all masked off i'm just spraying some of this self-etching primer or self yeah self-etching primer on it and we'll see how flat it is or how not flat it is, whatever. And I'm probably go back and sand it down to, I don't know, 220. Just sanded it and wiped it down. I sanded it with a 220 grit and it's all right. It came out decent, <laughs> I would say. All right, here's my plan for as far as paint goes. I have to match this patina it has on it already. As you can see it's like maroon as like the base coat and then like white and the white mark the whites is kind of like i don't know coming through in some areas and yeah so i gotta figure out how to match that and this is what i came up with i'm gonna spray it maroon with this rust-oleum right here it's a very similar color as as the original colors spray it maroon and then i have flat white that i'm gonna lightly spray on top not as thick as the maroon. The maroon's gonna be like a full coat basically. And then after the white's gone on for a few minutes, I'm gonna run this wire brush through it, like in all different directions. So it kind of mimics. Can you kind of see how like it'll focus? Let's see, let's focus this. <laughs> you can't focus. But anyways, uh it kind of has like a wire brush like it's going down almost, but in some places it's like going sideways. And that's just how the paint wore out. Like there's like Literally like, looks like tic-tac-toe cross patterns right there. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm not expecting it to turn out great, but if it does, I'll be stoked. So let's go ahead and start applying that paint. The wire brush is working great. It's actually, I don't know if you can see that, it's coming along real good. Yeah, let me compare it to something like this one. Obviously, I'll go back tomorrow and sand it down with some uh, sandpaper in some areas, like along there. But just the scratching kind of mimics the way it's scratched on the rest of it. And so, uh, the wire brush is working good. I'm going to let it dry a little bit longer down here before I do the same thing to it. It's pretty funny. You just freshly paint something and you start scratching it up, as you can see. I can't remember having focusing problems today, but as you can see, you can just kind of do your own little designs or whatever. Try to mimic how, you know, all this mess looks right here. So, stoked with the way it's coming out. I did not expect it to look this good. And uh, I can't wait to put the windshield in. Hopefully it fits. Okay, it is the next day now, and the paint should be dry. It's faux t it actually looks pretty cool. Luckily, Andrew showed up, everyone's favorite uh, overlander. <laughs> So we'll, we'll see if you can help me put this windshield in. I've never put one of these in without breaking it, so I maybe I can have a... <laughs> Did you get the tools out like I told you? <laughs> so Andrew's... How does it hold this? The glue, how does it hold it down? The rubber seal, the lip goes over the lip on the car, it like holds into place. So some silicone on here. So when Andrew breaks this windshield, like I said, at least we tried, you know? This is a lot of pressure, man. I'm gonna... Damn. Put that string like on the inside of the car. You put that string on the side. Uh. <laughs> Is that this other one? Here, here. Yeah. Okay, you're good. That's, that's strong enough to... Oh my gosh! That's strong enough to hold it in? Yeah. You sure? So we just got the windshield in. This is like the first time I've ever got one in without breaking it. 
I guess I, uh, I took a few notes from the last guy who installed my windshield. So yeah, uh, obviously all my replacement sheet metal was good because window still goes in nice, the seal's nice, and it looks excellent. Thank you so much, Andrew, for dropping by. Appreciate that, your expertise. You're welcome. Oh, it looks so dope in there. I'm gonna pat the seal down a little bit just to get it to seat a little bit better, but it looks super sick in there. I'm super excited. So that is where I'm gonna wrap it up for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed that video and I hope it helped someone out there. I couldn't really find too much information a lot of old pictures that have been taken down from like um, the Samba or there was like one or two YouTube videos that were just not very clear at all. So hopefully it made it a little bit easier for you guys if you guys are doing the same repair. Honestly, you could probably get it done in a weekend uh, if you really grind on it. And uh, if I could make another recommendation, I would recommend going with the classic fab, the funky green ones. Uh, the fitment on this one wasn't great, but uh, it ended up working out in the long run, a little bit of body work. Um, you know, also had a few little extra tools, like I had some hammers and dollies and stuff, but that's not even necessary, really. Um, I'm going to throw in a few more pictures of it completely done, so you can see the front end and how it's painted and how it looks. It literally looks uh, just like factory. Anyways, thank you for watching this week's video. If you liked it, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more car content. Thank you so much for watching.